You're listening to the Coop Homeschool Podcast. This is your podcast for community, humility, and joyful fun in homeschooling. I'm Mandy. I'm Jessica. And this is The The Coop. Coop. We're back! Yay! (laughs) So we took our summer break and here we are. And um, we're taking a a pretty interesting topic today. Yeah, it'll be so fun to discuss. We're going to talk about losing our identities. To homeschooling, right? Yeah, yeah. Specifically homeschooling. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be quite the conversation. Yeah, REM just came in my mind. <laughs> that is we so should have had that playing on the lead in. Oh, maybe it will. <laughs> anyway, um, what have you been up to on our break? Okay, so as everybody knows, because everybody listens to all of our episodes, yes. we went on a Colorado road trip. So that awesome. was awesome. 19 mm-hmm. hours there, 26 hours back. And we'll have a, a whole podcast about that yeah. later. But that was accomplished. Check yes. that off my list. Um, and so many different stops for national parks or so monuments cool. or whatever. Mm-hmm. So that was pretty awesome. Um, also, my son did golf camp. You know, so he, I think, won the little competition that they oh, had. Cute. Yeah, it was really cute. And he, he seemed to be really encouraged by it. Yeah. Does this seem like this might be his new thing? Oh, it totally is. Like, yeah. he's passionate about it. He wants to be a pro golfer and have his homeschool family travel with him. So cute. Yeah, so cute. Aww. And uh, ukulele camp and a road trip to uh, Santa Barbara, or not Santa Barbara, uh, Santa Cruz yeah. for a wedding. and So cool. Um, in-laws coming or came, you know, to t- came to town for a week and mm-hmm. yeah. So wow. lot, you know, the summer is actually busier than the school year. It's crazy. We talked you- about being able to like relax in the summer and that has not been the case. Yeah. Although I do have to say my kids, when they say, can I watch boss baby? Sure. Yeah. Can I watch Molly of Denali? Sure. Can I play Nintendo? Sure. Right. As I'm laying in bed watching my show, I'm like, <laughs> totally. I'm taking a break, you know? Totally. Yeah. yeah. What about I feel you? like we haven't even had that time to be at home. I know. Since the last podcast and now this one, we have had almost five to six weeks nonstop of family. Yeah, you have. Some planned months in advance and others were spontaneous. Um, and it's been amazing, but it has been nonstop. Yeah. I mean, cause everyone wants to go to the beach when they come out right. here. So then you're driving to the beach and right. that's a, on top of my schedule. So yeah. most of you guys know I teach dance. Mm-hmm. So I work through the summer, you know, um, my kids still have their activities and by my kids, I mean my oldest daughter, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she has her activities. And so even though we're not schooling at home, I don't feel like our schedule is any different. Yeah. Nothing really has dropped out of mm-hmm. my schedule, except that I'm when we're at home, I'm not trying to keep up with some things, you know. So anyway, yeah, we'd be meeting people at the beach after this, and then my husband would come later, and I was mm-hmm. like, wow, this is like the days where you know he used to go to the office, you know, oh, where yeah, he'd have yeah. to work on site instead of at home, you know, because now we just go everywhere together, yeah. and we're just always there, and so it's easiest to just go at the same time. But it was a wild few weeks, and we loved visiting our family. Um, the cut like the kids got to see almost every single cousin they ever have had in their That's lives, awesome. and so it's pretty neat. But, um, I'm tired. Oh, I know. I, I, I think I was in bed for a whole week. (laughs) I'm like, do I have COVID? Like, is this like Epstein Barr getting triggered or something? But, oh, I have to say we haven't started back to school just yet, but that's coming soon. But I, uh, was helping my daughter clean out her desk and I came across all these Kumon workbooks that I had forgotten to have her do as like practice for multiplication, like single digit. And like, oh no, she, yeah. And one of them's double digit on both numbers and stuff, multiplication. And I really wanted her to do it. So I said, I, I was like, do you want to do these? No. I'm like, okay. So now I'm going to do extrinsic. Right. Because right, she right. didn't intrinsically so want to do them. Right. I said, okay, if you get these done before school starts, then you get like, this book is worth five bucks. This book, book is worth 10 bucks. Because you don't have to do them. But once school starts, I'm going to assign these to you. Right. And you won't get paid for them. And you won't get paid. Yeah. And the idea was I really wanted her to practice multiplication because uh, that seems to be such a defining factor in people's yeah. like mathematical success. Totally. And 
although she's excited about multiplication, multiplication nation and she loves doing multiplication nation, I, she still needs more practice. Totally. So she voraciously has done these workbooks and she, she goes to bed at night and that's what she works on. These workbooks. Funny. Yeah. That's so funny. Well, that's I good. know. Okay. Yeah. I knew what would motivate her. Yeah, totally. I mean, I, I was at least good enough to say, Oh, do you want to do these? No. Okay. There's no right. intrinsic there right. that I'm taking away from. So right. now, and, and at least like from doing that podcast, I'm yeah. a little more clued into it right. and I knew to do that first and be like, okay, well, we'll make it worth some money. We'll make it worth your while. You That's know? right. Yeah. Do it. So that was kind of funny. All right. Well, we've still got more summer to go, so we'll keep catching you up on each of our scoops. Um, but it, that was a nice little break we had. Yeah. It feels so exciting to be back and doing the podcast again after yeah. a month break. Oh, totally. Yeah. yeah. All right. So let's get to it. Um, we're talking about losing our identity and specifically as homeschool moms. Um, and so, you know, I think of the idea of how much value we place in our role as homeschool parents mm -hmm. um, and how much the successes that we feel end up becoming moments that we are so proud of. You know, yeah. like when our kids learn to read and all of these things, we feel proud of that achievement and that accomplishment. And we should. Mm -hmm. But how much of it really becomes a part of our identity just versus, you know, you know just a part of our lives, you know? Mm -hmm. And then on the flip side, when we experience a homeschool fail, like we all do, how devastating it can be yeah. when our identity is wrapped up in being a homeschool mom. Yeah. You know, like, then what are we even good at? Yeah. If I couldn't even get this thing to happen, then what am I even doing? I know. Yeah. Who am I? Who am I? Which is what we want to talk about. Yeah. So I thought we'd maybe kind of jump into the, hmm, the history of identities. So over the course of, of time, whether, you know, our growth, our developmental growth, or major milestones change them, our identities change over time. Yeah. And when we were kind of briefing on this conversation before, you know, there's a time when you're a child where you don't really have any identity. Yeah. Well, yet. I was, I mean, I have to say I started, you know, I was doing gymnastics and right. other, you right. know, things like that. But by six years old, oh, by eight years old, yeah. I made the decision to be a swimmer. Right. Versus just playing at it. Right. And then from then on, I was a swimmer. Right. And that's how people knew me. Oh, she's a swimmer. Right. That was me. I was the ballerina. Yeah. Yeah. At you, school. I was like, really? Yeah. That's what you're going to call me? But that's, well, I was good with that because right. I was something. Yeah. You know, and that was what I was really good at. And, and. I defined myself that way. Right. And that was where I spent the majority of my time. School was just kind of something I did on the side. Yeah. You know, swimming was what I did and great, where yeah. my closer friend, friend group was. Mm -hmm. And, um, and yeah. And so, and you see that in sports, especially, right? Right. Or I should just say extracurriculars that you're committed to. Cause like yeah. if someone's, um, a theater into theater, like right. they're an actor, right? Right. Yes, that's yeah, a thespian. So, and it's it's just funny, like even in college, when I swam in college, when people who have their identity in their sport and that was taken away because of injury, they would go off the deep end. Yep. They're like totally getting wasted on, you know, a Thursday night at the frat parties and stuff. Right. Where before they wouldn't have. No, they were self disciplined. Yeah, it's yeah. Who, who are they if they don't have their sport? And it's, it's like a... a a come to Jesus moment. Who am I? You know? And I think there's so much of that that happens, you know, um, cause you know, you were about eight mm -hmm. when your identity became swimmer, Yeah, you know? And so before that, I think our identities are very much wrapped up in what our parents think of us, what totally. our parents want yeah. us to be. And then we reach that point of sort of taking ourselves away from our parents and finding who we are, so yeah. to speak, you know, and I mean, there's just so much out there about, yeah. you know, becoming your true self. Yeah. And all of well, yeah, I mean, it could, it could be anything from being a, a chess club champion right. to, you know, uh, a, a Christian club or right. LGBT or right. whatever you are, you know, right. it could be any of those things, or it could be that you're part of the junior statesman of America and you're the, right. you're the good, you know, you know, Republican or Democrat yeah. or whoever you are. Right. So I would ask you, 
what came after swimmer for you? How did you identifying as a swimmer end and yeah. like what was next? Yeah, I think that was hard because I actually quit swimming after my junior year of college right. because I wanted to know what life was like. And um, so my senior year, but then I coached swimming. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think I... Uh, maybe I didn't really, I really invested in my now husband. Right. That, that he became like my all in all at that point because right. I, like we hung out every day, right. but you know, I didn't have swimming to do that. And yeah, I don't think I really had an identity at that point. I had to find it. Right. But then when I graduated, I became a teacher. So then mm -hmm. now I'm a teacher. Right. Did you feel like you found more of your identity in your job or what you invested your work and time into, you know, so you went from swimmer, which was a ton of your work. And like mm -hmm. you said, almost even more than your school, Yeah, you know, and then you went from swimmer to maybe teacher mm -hmm. next versus being Mandy, you know, yeah, like some right. people, you know, they end up finding. Them. Oh, well I was the goofy one, right? I was the goofy, silly one. So right. maybe, maybe I attached to that a bit. I mean, I always knew I was a Christian, sure. you know, so I knew that was part of my identity. Mm -hmm. And I probably in, you know, my senior thing, it was like probably Christian swimmer, yeah. you know, right. and that was basically it. Those right. Were the two. And so then you always had that to hold on yeah. to. So nothing was truly devastating, even though it was a big right. change to go from this swimmer identity into something else. Yeah. Yeah. But it is, it is a weird, you know, when I, well, we were talking, when I went from being a teacher to a receptionist and here I was finishing my master's of education, yeah. it was jarring. It was almost like, well, a receptionist is not good enough to tell people because right. my identity is that I was a teacher and I was this collegiate swimmer. And then now right. I'm a receptionist, which like actually it was a, an amazing job and I right. loved it, right. you know, and, and I was like, I could do this my whole life, you know, right. but, um, but there, there's just some weird thing about like your status and your identity as well. Yeah. And, and, and actually being, you know, if we would just want to work our way to homeschool mom real quick, yeah. um, like I love telling people I'm a homeschool mom. Yeah. I love, even if they disapprove of homeschooling, yeah. I actually like get excited <laughs> then to tell them, yeah. like, I love the provoking and, and they're like, oh, wait, what, what? And you now, do what? Yeah, yeah. What, how do you do that? And it's actually really fun to, to hear their reaction about yeah, it. That's true. Being a nonconformist. Right. You know, and, uh, I never feel closeted about that. Yeah. But I might even feel closeted about my faith sometimes to, you know, to be perfectly yeah. honest, even yeah. though as transparent and out that I am about it, I think I, I would even hide that more than I would right. homeschooling. Right. And let's keep going down that path. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people finding their identity in politics. Yeah, definitely. You know, and then there's times where, you know, if you feel like you voted this way or that way, you're not going to share it with a certain group or certain or person, people or yeah. at all yeah. out of fear of, you know, a response that you might get. And then they see that as your identity. That's yeah. the thing. People you get seen like determine well. you yeah. based upon their connotation and their context, not yeah. even knowing your own context. Right. And I think that we've researched this before and I think it's just a known psychology thing that people need to compartmentalize. They need to mm -hmm. categorize. Yeah. You know, kids do that at young ages. You know, is it this or is it that? You know, and they mm -hmm. need that answer. And I think that that's kind of just what we all do inadvertently or subconsciously. Yeah. You know, we, we want to categorize people too. So Mandy, she's a Christian. She's a homeschool mom. And you yeah. Know, and, yeah. and whatever boxes I can put you yeah. in. And so now yeah. I know who you are. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of times I'm I'm the fun one. Right. Can you, know? you please put me in that box? Yeah. Put me, say that I'm the fun one. Yeah. You know, you're missing something. Yeah. Now you went straight from being a, a dancer to a dance teacher. Yeah, I did. Um, there was a short period of time where I wasn't dancing or teaching. So I had just graduated college. I was working, um, as an administrative assistant, I think for it. I think at this point it was for an accounting firm. And so I was kind of wrapped up in being a 20 year old college grad with a real job and, you know, mm -hmm. supporting myself in an expensive city and all of this stuff. 
And so my identity wasn't necessarily a specific, I could name it, but yeah. it was definitely wrapped up in being this independent young woman for sure. Do you ever find that I've tried to put on identities like in high school, I really wanted to be like a surfer. Yeah. So I, I wore the billabong and the rusty right, right. and all that and the, the right shoes and the, but I never was because I was too busy swimming. Right. You know, I could hold my own in sure. ocean water, but right. I didn't have any surfboards. Surfing. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I remember in college then I tried surfing with a group of guys. Marcus was part of that group. And I was like, this is way too hard. Not in. <laughs> no way am I doing this. Right. <laughs> but, and so that kind of like changed my whole, like, someday I'll be a surfer, you right. know? So, so did you feel like when you were in San Francisco that you put on, put on, like, I'm this into, like, yeah, like sure. you have an, some identities we just fall into. Right. And then we realize it, but then some identities you put on. I think it's a little bit it, of right? both because I don't, I, I was just living my life before that and I was just doing what I wanted to do. And then all of a sudden I got up there and it was like, you're 17. Like when I was first going to college, you're 17 and you're going to graduate in two years. Yeah. You, you know, you're 17 and you're renting an apartment with yeah. a friend. You know, it was like all of this people were categorizing me. Right. And so then I fell into this identity and felt for sure, the need to keep up with it, right. you know, so then when I did graduate and then I did get the job and then I did, you know, and so it was definitely like this idea of, I have to live up to their expectations yeah. of who I am. Right. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And, um, but I realized in that year of working at the accounting firm, uh, before I moved into working for an advertising agency, which gave me a little more flexibility and freedom in my schedule. Um, I didn't take a dance class or, mm. or teach anything. And I remember feeling the, the sort of floundering feeling of like, what was all of those years of dance for? Oh, you know, yeah. like I was sort of, you know, just feeling very not myself. Mm -hmm. And so, um, when I switched jobs, I had more free time to be able to go take classes. And so I started taking classes again and it was amazing and I loved it. And I was like, why did I ever leave? I love dancing. Yeah. It's kind of like, um, you know, you have the right quote unquote identity when yeah. it gives you life Yeah, and it's not hard to put on. It doesn't no. feel fake. It feels right. authentic and yeah. it, and it feels true to you. Right. It's and, not all consuming. And it's, and it's not something yeah. you have to tell everybody. No. You know, it's it's just who you are. It's just who I am. I am a dancer. Yeah. You know, there's a, a killer song called I Am, or is it called Dancer? <laughs> are we human or are we dancer? It's oh, funny. Lyrics. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll tag that one here for you guys. Um. Anyway, that was always a funny song for me because I'm like, I am dancer. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like that is me. Yeah. I just am. Well, I, I mean, I'm just realizing now that I'm a non- I don't know that I'm all completely a nonconformist. Right. You know, I don't have purple hair. Right, right. I mean, I want it, but that's yeah. a weight loss goal. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, but I'm realizing, oh, homeschooling, that decision was nonconformist. And then some of the recent decisions right. in, in life really? that I've made decisions about have been nonconformist as well. And sure. then I was like, I'm, I'm a nonconformist, but just right. saying I'm a right. You've just identified yourself. Yeah, yeah, and 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 it might not be true to the word. I might not be true to that word, but I do wear fanny packs when no one else wears them. Right. Like years before anybody was wearing them, I do have on jelly bracelets. Right, you know, like I do. Right. Things that are non-conforming. Yeah. And we've said this before. Are you just being unapologetically yourself? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. and so, but we, we feel this need to categorize ourselves yeah. almost also to explain to other people. Right. Because even though we don't want to be put in a box, that box is something that other people understand. Yeah. When you say you do this, you know, but I remember, here's something that's funny now that I think about it. I remember it being amusing to tell people my identities oh. to see how not uh, typical they were. Oh yeah. That's fun. Yeah. Because I would meet people at social gatherings and I mean, I guess I was young and I was like, well, just girl. to say you're a dance teacher though, too, right. is, is and unique, you know, you know, uh, I, I was cute, and so I'd be at, like, these work social events when I was 20 years old, and these men were probably 30. 
So not old men. Oh, yeah, but they're not expecting you to be 20. <gasps> no, yeah. they, they're not. And yeah. so they're talking to me and they're asking questions. And then, so then they find out I'm way younger than they expected, right? Yeah. So that's like identity buster number yeah. one. Like they have no idea who I am. Yeah. Then, you know, finding out I'm a dancer is amusing or all yeah. these other things, yeah. you know, that end up coming up. And so it ended up being something funny that I would start doing, like sharing these random things about me yeah, rather than the, you know, more conforming aspects of right. my identity. I'd be like, oh yeah, I used yeah, to it's motorcycles. Fun. And oh, yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? And be like, what? <laughs> yeah. yeah. But then there's like my sister who's authentically... Still a doing yeah. person. Well, it's so funny when I first started getting to know you and you opened up about some things right. to me, I was just like, what? Who is that is girl? not who you are today. <laughs> right. Like, I can't even imagine who that person was, right. you know. But that was me, you yeah, know. Like, it was. I grew yeah. up learning to ride motorcycles. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, and so that was, there became a time where that became something that I. I almost idolized, like I yeah. or had some kind of like idolatry wrapped up in what people thought I was. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Well, I mean, that's, I mean, that's where I, when I say I love telling people right. that I homeschool. Right. And I think that's my biggest identifier. I mean, I, I identify my friends that way. Oh, she's my homeschool friend or she's right. my, um, we homeschool together. Yeah. 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 It, 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 it is my biggest identifier right now, almost bigger than being a mom because right. I was already a mom for however long right. and then started homeschooling. So I don't just say, right. Oh, I'm a mom. I right. say, Oh, I'm a homeschool mom. Right. Well, in the context of socializing in general, you know, we're looking for other like people, right? Yeah. That's a lot of what we're doing in life mm -hmm. is we're looking for people where we can fit in. Yeah. And so by identifying ourselves as homeschool moms, hopefully people either, I mean, how many, I mean, I'm thinking of our friend's yeah, mom, yeah. you know, when she knew we were homeschool moms, which she obviously knew because that's how we knew her daughter. Yeah. But it's just something now we all have in common. Totally. So when you throw it out there as an identifier. Especially when the identifier is a niche or right. niche. Right. It, 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 it bonds you in a special way. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And it just helps us find other people, you know, mm -hmm. so by saying we're a homeschool mom, you know, it's easy. I remember you telling me the story of, of being on a baseball team uh -huh. and there were moms there that you were trying to get to know because you were trying to find a social group for yeah. yourself Oh yeah, and you went out with them and you're like, Nope, that's not my oh, group. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I won't be more specific than that, but yeah. you knew that wasn't your group. And right. so part of our identifying, you know, our, our need to identify ourselves is so that we find our group. We yeah. find our people. I like to just say, it's my people or it's yeah. not my people. Yeah. You know, I want to find my people. And so our identities are usually similar, mm -hmm. you know, but then we love what makes each other unique. Right. So, yeah. you know, so we have our common identifier and then we have our unique. Yeah. Cause we sharpen we each other. Right. And, you know, I was yeah. just telling you how yesterday I got to watch my friend up on it on the yeah. stage singing. I don't know any other singers yeah it's so cool yeah speaking of like that, that was yeah. that was just like life enriching and joy giving right. totally. and she's a homeschool mom too and she's yeah. a homeschool mom yeah. Yeah. Uh, just this little side tangent um my daughter was like mom how much do singers make i was like i don't even know how to start answering that question i'm like well it really just depends on what kind of singer you are what yeah. are you thinking about you know anyway cute just a random a singer. That's so cute. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, she should come and watch our friend. Totally. Yeah. Um, so I want to kind of move into when do identities become a problem? Mm -hmm. And so we kind of just discussed that with the idea of idolatry mm -hmm. and things that we falsely put our faith in or yeah. put our hopes in, you know? And so I think there's times where in all of these identities we've shared, mm -hmm. we've probably struggled with it becoming an idol in our life versus just a part of who we are. Right. And, you know, as homeschool moms, I think that that is hard because homeschool mom, I think, like you said, you kind of stopped identifying just the mom aspect. Yeah. You are homeschool mom. That is part of your mom job. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That is all the same hat. Yeah. You know, you don't take off the mom hat and put on homeschool right. mom no, hat. Yeah. You yeah. Know, that the is the hat. same thing. Yeah. And so uh, it, it's a huge part of who we are. We spend how many hours a day? I every know. Every single And now day, in our every, free time, yeah. we're talking about it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yep. 
<laughs> find good pastimes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, we love it, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. But at what point does it become unhealthy for us, you know, to have our identity wrapped up in being a homeschool mom? Well, I think it, well, what I have seen is just in my own self, I would have a hard time transitioning my kids to like a traditional school if that was needed. Yeah. Because who am I then? Right. And, what does that say? And about then you? what would I do all day? Right. You just failed. If yeah. you're not homeschool mom, then who are you? Yeah. And 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 so I think it might take away some of the flexibility you might want. Right. If if that's your identifier and you're idolizing it. Right. I agree. I think, you know, I think the struggle to feel like I need to be perfect at it mm -hmm. is definitely a place where I struggle sometimes, you know, well, cause we've both excelled at our identifiers yeah. in our life. Right. And when I would hear people say that they were swimmers and they didn't swim the way that I swam, like they didn't have the schedule right. and the commitment that oh, I had, sure. I'd be like, they're not, not a really swimmer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're just someone who plays swim. at swimming yeah. and, and, right. and, and, but that's, you're not an actual swimmer. Right. And so then we get on our pedestal and totally. feel like we're, we're able to judge others. I know. It's that's ridiculous. Gross. Yeah. Like, who are we? Well, I was doing that with homeschooling when I heard, like, when I first started homeschooling and I wasn't with anybody. And then I heard people going with a charter or doing a hybrid. I'm like, well, they're not really homeschooling because right. the, the charter is providing the curriculum and they're not picking it themselves. Or their kids are going to a drop off two days a right. week. So they, they must not be that's homeschooling. Not That's not homeschooling. Right. And so I had my own definition. And then it happens within the approaches, too. We've talked about totally. that with, like, whether it be unschooling or Charlotte right. Mason. Like, you're not right. doing copy work. You must not be doing Charlotte Mason. Right. Or you're not in nature every day. You must not be doing Charlotte Mason. You're not right. You're not a Charlotte Mason homeschooler. Right. Everything you know? is compartmentalized and yeah. judging. And it's really weird. Yeah. Um, but I, like, even, I mean, if we're being really blunt and honest here, at the beginning of, of the COVID lockdowns last year when we decided to go forward with our coop homeschool mm -hmm. um you know we we always thought it would be something later right mm -hmm. like when we were done homeschooling maybe or at the ends of our homeschooling journey we'll all do that yeah website, yeah yeah you know, yeah, that yeah. Stuff. but then there's this idea of we needed to know what pe we needed to tell people what homeschooling oh, yeah. was <laughs> we felt very self-righteous about we did. it yeah you know, like, like we like, can't we can't let this perspective like virtual schooling is, is not, not homeschooling. homeschooling yeah and we felt so self-righteous and now i'm like who cares it was hard for everybody. Yeah. Like now totally. those moms know that it's hard. And I would say it was harder than homeschooling. Oh, yeah. But homeschooling is hard. You know, it's all yeah. hard, but being a mom is hard. You know, it's well, all and hard. And they were schooling at home. Right. So in some people's genre of homeschooling is virtual schooling, is Absolutely. having them in a Choice right. Plus Academy or whatever yeah. it's called. We backed know? off from our attitude. I yeah. think it was only a month or two that we held on to these really strong yeah. opinions. And we still have our very strong opinions about yeah. what homeschooling is and what it isn't. But I backed off a lot after watching it happen for a year. You know, I feel oh, yeah. a lot more compassion towards those people who were forced into that situation and wanting to, you know. But anyway, that knocked me down a little bit to mm -hmm. say, like, what? who are you to judge these people's yeah. choices? You know yeah. what I mean? And I mean, that's what we want. We want everyone right. just making the choices they want to make. Right. Across the board, whatever it is, you exactly. know. So we know that being too wrapped up in an identity can be a problem, yeah. you know? And so how, like, how do you find a good balance of identity? You know, who are you? How do you find your authentic self? And what does that even mean? You know? I know. Yeah. I mean, I, for I'm you I'm quiet me, on this one. I, yeah. I'm like, well, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it was somewhat rhetorical, not forced yeah, on you. Yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, that's where my mind was going was, okay, so then what is a healthy balance of identity? Mm -hmm. And like you said, you are a person who swims. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, well, ultimately. Yeah. yeah, it's like what I try and, especially when they were little with the kids, I never wanted them to say, I'm going to be a veterinarian. Right. I mm -hmm. wanted it to be where they would say, I would say to them, how do you want to make money when you're older? Right. And then they'd say, oh, a veterinarian. So I'd say, oh, you want to work as a veterinarian because that's just one aspect right. of a person right. is their interests. Right. And if they can get paid for it, that's awesome. Right. You're not raising a veterinarian. No. You're raising an amazing kid to become an adult who might work 
as a veterinarian. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's, it's applying that perspective, which is so easy to look at our kids that way, knowing that they aren't the job that they're going right. to have or the, the person that they're going to marry is not going to define them either yeah. or the number of kids that they have or whatever. None of that defines them. So to apply that to ourselves is, is really important, but we just forget to do that. We forget to do that. And I think there's different ways that different groups of people with different backgrounds and beliefs find their authentic selves. You know, I think that for you and me, our identity is in Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, we believe he died for us and we are told to, to find our identity in him. You know, I'm a daughter of Christ. And so Mm -hmm. Like Everything he has, a, else. He has yeah. a plan for us. He has a purpose for yeah. us. And, and, and our purpose really is just to glorify God. So. Exactly. And so for me, the things that I use to identify who I am really should show him. Yeah. You know, and so we've used the word, you know, we feel called to mm-hmm. homeschool. Like it, it wasn't me saying that yeah, it yeah. was me feeling called to homeschool like, yeah. and then to have everything be arranged in my life in such a way that I'm able to do it. Mm-hmm. It shows me that for me, I believe I'm on the right path. That's yeah. where, where God wants me to be. And he's blessing this opportunity for our family, Yeah, you know? And so I have to always remember that my identity is there and I am homeschooling. Yeah. I am a dance teacher. I am doing these things, but that's not all that I am. Yeah. It's not who I am. It's not where I find my value. Yeah. You know, where I find my value is being a, a daughter of Christ. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And that's just so interesting. And that would apply to no matter what school choice people mm-hmm. make for their children, because think of, you know, when you're in the traditional school, right? I was an A student or a B student, right. you know, or I was a honor student, you right. know, and, and, and it's so funny because I'm thinking about what we do to our kids. What grade are you? That's usually one of the first things right. More boxes. we ask. It's like, that's not who they are, right. but we're trying to think of things to say. And, and, um, instead we should be saying, what, what are your interests? Right. What do you love doing? Right. You know, right. and, and instead we always categorize kids according to grade what school they go to what their favorite subject is instead favorite subject is just an interest so instead we could just say what do you like to do right what's something you're learning that you're passionate about right and we've talked about that in our our planning our year episodes you know last year's and this year's you know we ask our kids what do you want to learn like what are you interested in um what activities do you want to do you know like you wouldn't necessarily have known your kids would have been into golf unless you helped them. You know what I mean? You don't know. And how would you know that Micah would have found his new passion? I know. You know what I mean? For all those years, he was wrapped up in baseball. Baseball was his thing. Yeah. You know, but you didn't force that on him, which is one of those beautiful things Mm -hmm. is you saw him as more than this thing that he just did for a while. And right. You know, it it didn't devastate you that he didn't want to do it, but Mm -hmm. you did feel like there's got to be something else. Right. And you were able to patiently go and find it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he did flag football a couple seasons. He did a season of soccer and he did lacrosse. He did. Oh, no. The girls did the girls did that. Yeah. But he watches sports and right. and somehow, oh yeah, someone at the dance yeah. school was doing golf mm-hmm. and, and her son went from baseball to golf. So yep. we said, why don't we just try it and see if you like it? And he loves it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's good for certain mm-hmm. personalities for sure. And I yeah. see kids thrive in it. And yeah. that's what's fun about not identifying our kids by what they like. Oh yeah. If I said, oh, things. he's a baseball player. Right. You then that would so be a weird, yeah, he wouldn't be able to, well, and you, and you think of things that come up in the school year. So mm-hmm. I noticed, you know, our, our, both our daughters were into making movies. And right. so what did we do? We gave them more time to do that. Right. And, um, we got them tablets and then they wanted a green screen and you researched it and it was really special effects they wanted to do. Right. So found an app that can do the special effects and, and so, yeah, they're still having to do stuff they don't want to do, like maybe sure. math or whatever, but, but they're getting pa- autonomy over something that they right. are interested in and getting to pursue that. Right. We're not, we're not trying to put identities on them that are outside of, of their faith. You right. know what I mean? Like 
we know where who they belong to Mm -hmm. we know their value and where their value comes from their value doesn't come from what we think they should be doing right you know and it's important to tell them that now because inevitably we're all going to have those struggles like how many times do we feel like we've disappointed our parents oh totally we can't do those things you know and so i know my kids will feel that but i really want to work hard to not to help them yeah to not put that on them you know, yeah. there's a difference between expecting them to yeah. do what I want them to do. And there's, you know, so it's just a, a really hard balance. And I think, I mean, there's just an abundance of, of material out there for finding yourself and mm-hmm. being your authentic self. And I think that looks different for different people, mm-hmm. you know, and so we shared what our version of that is, but I believe that, you know, other people who, who aren't Christian, they have their own you know, purpose, value and and identity system, you know what I mean? And I think that it's important even, um, for everybody to be careful of being wrapped up in any one identity, you Mm -hmm. know? And so if, if your value comes from being your authentic self, then you have to look at your identities as part of a whole and not just choose the one and put all of your value there. Yeah. It can be very hard when you have all of your value in something. Yeah. You know? Well, yeah. And, and what if something happened and I had yeah. to go back to work and we couldn't right. homeschool anymore? How and will I be able to cope with that? Right. In a in a positive, functional, right. you know, enriching way. Yeah. You know. You know, and with my children watching. Right. Absolutely. And yeah. So I think it's very important to find that balance. And I'm just going to throw out this example because it came up just this week. Um, my 15 year old niece is a ballerina, ballerina, you know, so here I am identifying her to you. She is calling her out (laughs) on who she is. I mean, it's so ingrained. It's so ingrained, but that's the thing. You would look at her life and you would know she's a ballerina, you know, I mean, she's got her Instagram account that she is a ballerina, Mm -hmm. but she's just this unique little spirit and she's had a um an interesting couple years in her dance training and has encountered this year in particular injury after injury oh no and it's had to bring up the conversation of maybe this is not your calling <gasps> right oh, I, mean, like, you know, I have goosebumps just yeah. thinking about that but that's the thing is she said you know what if i just need to co- be closer to to christ right now then maybe that's what I need oh, to do. I'm you know, sure I, her. she's just this Amazing. incredible soul and I don't think she'll listen to this or her mom, Yeah, you know, so I feel pretty safe in saying it, but I wouldn't mind if they did because, you know, I don't know if I tell her enough, you know, I know I talk about her to my, yeah. my sister-in-law and she knows how proud of my niece I am, but she's just a very unique soul Yeah, and you know, she isn't wrapped up in the world as much, you know, and yeah. even we have, I'm putting that on her that she's a ballerina, you know, like me in my mind, yeah. like, what would she do? You know, I know, but that's the thing. Her being an excellent ballet dancer is only one small part exactly. of this amazing human yeah. being that she is. And all of the strengths that God have, God has given her, um, don't go away. Yeah. You know, yeah. what makes her a good ballet dancer can make her a really great, anything else well, she wants. And to I do. always think of like things like sports or mm-hmm. whatever it be helps mold us into who God is calling us to be. And that yeah. that's just giving us the strengths or the trials or right. the challenges or the and frustrations. And she might not be and- a ballet dancer forever, but even in this unique time that she's in, she's been able to, I don't want to say minister. That's not the right word, but she's been able to be an example to her other students or her other classmates. Yeah. Oh, you know well, you mean? know what? I it's her just, mission field. Yeah. Just, um, just piggybacking on that. I, w- it would be really cool though. If you saw your identity as like someone who serves others, right? You know, there are some identities like that, that would yeah. be really like, like, non self focused mm-hmm. and not achievement based, but right. more about helping and loving others or just like I serve and love others. Right. You know, like, yeah. How awesome would that be? That would be awesome. But I've never heard someone say when they say, Oh, you know, when I meet people, I'm like, what's your job? Right. What do you do? Right. Like I, I should say like, how do you serve people? Yeah. <laughs> how do you serve people? How do you I'd love on people? I know. I should try it. <laughs> I'll, I'll try that next time. Okay. The provoker yeah. in me is uh, liking this idea. Yeah. 
Yeah. I'd have to do it with you next to me, though, so I could no, get a chuckle out of it. I would it. laugh. I know. Yeah. And then the other person would be like, what is happening? And then, yeah. yeah. Who is this weirdo? <laughs> Where am I? Yeah. Well, anyway, I think that we kind of discussed this in a way. Um, you know, I I still love being a homeschool mom. Oh, and, definitely. You know, so it's just something that I have to constantly remind myself of. And so when we were discussing this topic, I just found it super unique and interesting yeah. because... You know, like we love being homeschool moms and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. That's totally, totally. fine. I mean, it just shows we're, we're where we want to be. Right. And I think it's just a matter of finding the balance, you know, mm-hmm. and, and it, I get to do it with you and we yeah. get to help each other in that way. You know, like when you had your homeschool fails, you know, and, and or we have our homeschool fails, just being yeah. able to pick each other up and say, you're more than that. Fail. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like of course you're going to fail, you know, like that is going to happen, but your worth doesn't come from you being a homeschool mom. So that fail doesn't count against you. Yeah. You know, it was funny. Uh, someone just yesterday was saying, Oh, you're, you're such a great mom. And I was like, no, I'm not like, this is, listen to what my six year old said. I said to her and I, I don't remember ever saying that. And, and I, I felt like I had to out my, my right. failings because don't call me a good mom. I'm right. I'm this is what my kid thinks I said, which right. I don't think I did, but obviously I communicated right. it's painful. Right. And then I was just now I'm carrying it around with me. Oh. Yeah. Because it, it kind of disturbed my identity as a mom. Yeah. You know? Well, here you go. You give that to God. Yeah. Yeah. You say I am not yeah. all that. I, I need help. Do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um yeah, it's it's just a constant thing if you yeah. if you pay attention this it identity is. thing. Yeah, yeah. where I mean it's everywhere. Yeah. You know, everybody has to be categorized and identified, even though there's this huge undercurrent of stop labeling people. Yeah, you can't not label people. Yeah, people can't stop labeling. Yeah, they label themselves and they label others, and then there's yeah determining yourself to be something and determining yeah. others to right. be something. I understand, and, you know, the reason why we say we shouldn't label, right? Like yeah. that usually comes in the context of not labeling kids ADHD, for example. Yeah, yeah. You know, I know that that's a big one. Yeah. Totally understand that context. Mm-hmm. However, that's not just how, our, that's just not how our brains work. Our yeah. brains need to categorize, need to provide Find commonalities. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so it, and then even in that, you know, there's all of that identif- identifying information that becomes very important. Well, then, then you see a lot of strife too, because if you have a certain, if you think someone's of a certain identity and then they come out as something else, you're, it's like jarring and then yeah. you, you don't know how to handle it. And it's right. just a funny thing we humans right. do. Well, like you can't often, handle it. Yeah. How often do we wonder about someone's identity in something you yeah know, like for instance not knowing someone's political affiliation right yeah you know like it's easy and then this language we sound like we're talking about sexual orientation yeah no anything but yeah. anything yeah so like political identities you know what i mean like i have remembered having a conversation with someone like hey who do you think they're voting for like i, I get no read off of them I totally you know yeah. but like my need to know is so deep and yeah it's, yeah it's really weird yeah yeah it's funny all right. Well, um, we should move on to our um, Coop Q and A. Oh yeah, Coop Q and A. I can't even say it. <laughs> so let me answer your, your questions. questions. Um, if you have a question that you want answered, um, head over to our podcast page on our website, thecoophomeschool.com, or email us, mamahens at thecoophomeschool.com. The big question of the night: Can I homeschool without a degree? Like a college degree yep. or even a, a, creden- a credential or a college yeah. degree even. Yeah, any kind of I think that's such degree. a common, let me just say, like, when people here at homeschool that don't homeschool and then they find out that I did some advanced education yeah. and they're like, oh, well, then Obviously, you're, you're you qualified. can do this. Oh, yeah. you've taught in the classroom. You can yeah. do this. And I just usually let it go because right. I'm not going to go into any kind of discussion about it. But it's it's so like, well, no. I mean, I didn't get a mom degree and I became a mom. Yeah. You know? Totally. I mean. Yeah. Seriously. I, I didn't, didn't learn how to teach a kid to walk, but here are my, here are yeah. my kids walking. I know. I didn't work for Mary Maids and get a <laughs> license in cleaning people's houses, but I cleaned a beach house for like two years. And right. 
did a pretty good job of it, I have right. to say. You know, yeah. I mean, there's so many things that you, you don't do that for. And people, for some reason, think parenting their children in certain content yeah. needs a college degree. Right. And we talk about this um, in our own way, in our own words, and through our own research in um, one of our Hesitant Homeschooler podcasts. Mm-hmm. So we'll link that in the um, our resources. Yeah. Um, but we found this really great article. Um, homeschoolers on to college, what research shows us by, um, Dr. Brian Ray. And, um, do you want to read it or do you sure. want to read it? Or, okay. or you have a better voice when you read it. <laughs> <laughs> a better radio voice than me. Okay. <laughs> um, so he actually identifies this as, um, one of the first questions that research is researchers ask is, does homeschooling work academically? Many policymakers, educators, homeschool administrators, and parents wonder whether ordinary mothers and fathers who are not government certified teachers are capable of teaching their children after age five. Is it possible for adults without specialized university level training in teaching to help their children learn what they need to learn? Many studies have been completed during the past 20 years that examine the academic achievement of the home educated. Dozens of research have ex- execute, researchers have executed these studies. Examples of these studies ranged from a multi-year study in Washington state, three nationwide studies across the United States, and a nationwide study in Canada. In study after study, the homeschooled scored on average at the 65th to 80th percentile on standardized academic achievement tests in the United States and Canada, compared to the public school average of the 50th percentile. Researchers wondering if only certain families in which the parents have a high educational attainment or family income are able to homeschool such that their children score high on achievement tests show that children in homeschool families with low income and in which the parents have little education are scoring on average above state school averages. In addition, research shows that the parents teacher certification has little to no relationship with their children's academic achievement and that the degree of state control of homeschooling has no relationship with academic achievement. So in other words, yes, there was no relation between the the level of degrees that the parents have and certifications um, in in education. Right. There was no connection relationship or connection to uh, homeschooler achievement on state testing. And the homeschooler scores did actually better than the traditional school scores. Yeah. And we have more demographic breakdown on that as well that we'll post um, because it's actually quite interesting because you would think demographically mm-hmm. that homeschoolers would be of higher income, would be of um, higher education, mm-hmm. homeschool parents, and they're just not. Yeah, you know, um, our charter school actually um, is right at the cusp of the 40 percentile of the poverty uh, classification. And it's a homeschool charter. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, it's an independent study charter, but it's right, homeschoolers. Right. And if you can reach a 40 percentile, then you're a Title I school. And we're right at that. So I think next year we might become that. It's crazy. And so so there's a lot of low-income yeah. families who homeschool. Right. And here's their scores. Right. Yeah, it's fascinating. In the 65th to 80th percentile above right. traditional school. So to answer this question... You can definitely homeschool without an advanced degree. Yeah. You don't need specialized training to be um, a successful homeschool parent. Uh, We believe you need support. Yeah. You need support and you may need to use resources outside of your own, you know. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. No one goes into any facet of activity without learning something about it first. You're not sure. going to go golf for the first time without right. looking at some YouTubes or right. or looking at a blog about it. You're not going to make m- make a cookie without looking at a recipe first. Right. And so same thing goes for education. Like right. you're going to you're going to do the same research you would do for putting on a nice dinner for Christmas. Yeah. You're you're going to look up the recipes. You're going to watch the YouTubes and then you'll be ready to go and and you'll practice maybe. Maybe even do a practice run. And so that's what I did uh, when I first started. I mean, you could use summer as a practice run. You could use 
totally. one subject, you yeah. know, outside of their schooling as a practice run, whether it be art or a language that right. you already know or something, something easy. But you could even practice if you don't have that confidence right. to see, like, could I do this? And I, I did that when my son was supposedly in kindergarten. Right. And then just I just dabbled. Did, I just yeah. dabbled. I did themes and we had a great time. Right. And then, and then I did it for real. Yeah. You know, and that's when he learned his, his reading was the yeah. next year, it's second so cool. year of kindergarten, you know? Yeah. So cool. Yeah. So, yeah. So that was a good question. I like being able to answer that with, you know, real research and yeah. get in there. Um, and you know, we homeschool moms really just enjoy being able to share the information about homeschooling and, you know, encouraging others to pursue that if they're interested. So. Yeah. If you're interested in, in research in general, you can look up Eric, E-R-I-C, which is mm -hmm. a great database and you can look up psychologytoday.com yeah. as well. And those, those are two reliable, you know, mm -hmm. places to look for research and studies and yeah. articles if you're interested in in any of the stats. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for listening. We love your support. Be sure to subscribe to our podcast, leave a rating and review to let us know how we're doing and share our podcast with your friends who need a little community, humility, and joyful fun in homeschooling.